I wanted to do a video today. It's Memorial Day 2023. Um, I wanted to share with you what's going on in my uh, Grand Canyon garden and my John and Mary garden. Uh, so far, well, this is not part of that, but it is. I Last year I did these four rings. Uh, I've placed impatience. And this year they came back. Um, some of them uh, were all reseeding themselves into the gravel area and I had to just clean that up. So I'm kind of happy that that looks really good. And I've actually had some already in here and I've placed these new ones. Let me show you really quickly this beautiful fuchsia color. So I think I'll have uh, a couple of white ones and a couple of red ones in there. So probably a, be a nice little mixture. And they're already starting to acclimate really nicely into the to the rings. Uh, I'm thinking that, not yet, but I'm thinking that I will try to remove these rocks and place some pavers that are, are in my reflecting garden that might work really well in this space. That might help just to kind of make it a little bit more I don't know, a little bit more, I don't know if that's the word, a little bit more prettier. These natural rocks are very beautiful and I love them, but I think I might change that. But we'll see, I, I'm not, it's not something I'm going to really worry about. And of course, what I've got to figure out is how to add some more pea gravel here, because um, this kind of slopes a little bit down this way. And over time, I keep losing the rocks that I, but even though these rocks here are stopping it and the rocks here are stopping the pea gravel, um, it doesn't really move like by a lot, but maybe by me stepping in here, I keep pushing down. So I might need to just buy a couple more, maybe like one more bag of pea gravel here just to kind of hide that little, <laughs> the cement pathway that we have here. Uh, so but anyway, this is minor things, nothing, nothing major to worry about. Um, I wanted to just got a little pot here with uh, creeping jennies. I put them in there last year with uh, I think I had some dahlias and uh, like low growing dahlias and um, something else. I can't remember if it was a I think it was a uh, wave petunia of some sort. I can't remember. But anyway, the, the creeping jennies came back. Um, and I'm kind of like, I'll leave you because I love them. They're really beautiful. They have that beautiful chartreuse color. And uh, so I think I'll just, I was going to try to put something back here behind it. I did, but I don't think it's coming, coming anytime soon. So we'll see what happens. But that's just a little pot. And, and then what I want to show you really quickly, I planted these uh, bulbs, these Dahlia bulbs, uh, three weeks ago, I would say. And look at them. In this particular area, it's right be, it's right at our back porch, as you can see as we come down. And I just fixed these posts because they got dry rotted. So I was able to replace that. And I had a, a uh, hydrangea. Um, I can't remember the type, but it had beautiful blue, bluish purple hydrangeas on, in, the, in their flower. Um, I don't think there are panicles. Uh, there are ones that you, they grow on, on new wood, I think. I can't remember. I'm not really good with hydrangeas fully, to be honest with you. There's so many variations, but it has a black stem and, uh, it's beautiful. But I had to move it because it was so, I mean, it was just so tight in the space. So I placed her all the way back there. My finger is pointing out. Uh, so that way she can be really spread out and I'll do another video on my reflecting garden what's going on there So back here, I just wanted to show you really quickly the dahlias that I placed They're they're plate sized dahlias I'm looking forward to seeing what they'll do. I've never planted them before um, I last year was the first time I planted dahlias uh, and these are the first ones that I've done in I got them from Sam's Club. They're called plate size, some kind of assorted variety dahlia. So we'll see what they do. But already, I mean, I planted them three weeks ago and they're already looking like they're just ready to go. So I'm happy about that. Um, 
Got some baby birds in that little corner of my back porch and the mommy's bringing her baby some, <laughs> some food. Okay, uh, just recently, let's come back around here. Uh, well, you guys saw the video I did just recently of these um, planters or pots. Um, and I did the wave petunias and uh, geraniums and creeping jennies. Uh, so they're still struggling. I don't know what's going on, but you know, keep giving them water when when the pot's dry. Uh, this one is kind of moving down, so let's see what that does. Uh, let's come over here really quickly because I literally just cleaned out this area in front of my porch. It's got knockout roses, and um, <laughs> I would say we cleaned this bed out three. No, we did it early February, late February, and um, cleaned out because there was a lot of weeds in there. Um, but I, you know, I, I kept saying, oh, I'll put something down. I'll put some, I had a tarp in there. The tarp has been ripped. It's been, you know, and all these things keep growing in there. So we had a lot of crazy stuff growing in there. This time I put tarp and I put a couple other like cardboard and stuff like that. So I brought some mulch. I just literally just finished that yesterday. So it looks a little bit cleaner. I'm happy with what that's looking like. Nice, right? And so let's climb back up here. Oh, here's the fire pit that I um, put, brought a new one in because the other one that we had uh, got eaten up by the elements. It had water sitting in there and it just kept breaking and it ended up corroding and breaking down the metal. So I have to buy a cover. I thought this particular one that I brought had a cover, but it didn't. So now um, I'll have to protect that one, knowing what I know now. And uh, so it looks pretty cool. Okay, so now let's walk over here. I think I, did I talk about this area? I did not. So this here is just a little bed of black eye Susans and Mexican petunias. And these are autumn sage, but they're a salvia. Um, I looked it up, but I was trying to figure out what was it, um, but it says that they're salvias. So either way, they're very beautiful. They've been here for years. They've been here since we first brought our home 17 years ago. And it wasn't here in this particular spot. It was another spot in our garden. Um, I placed it here maybe uh, two years after that, uh, maybe f I would say maybe 15 years ago, I've placed it there, and now it's just like it's just part of the the landscape, and it kind of I love how it just kind of flows into the walkway here. So um, we have a beautiful knockout rose. Yeah, somebody with their loud car, because uh, you know we all need to hear that. <laughs> we need to hear them their engine rattle like that. Anyway, so annoying. Okay, so knockout rose. I, I'm really, really working in my head how I'm going to pull this knockout rose because it's been getting huge. I cut it back like a lot. I chopped it down and I will need to do that. I think I need to just remove it because uh, I had water hoses and I just literally just got this water hose today. I ordered it off Amazon. It's supposed to be kink free and all that stuff. It's kind of like a shower head type of metal kind of thing that kind of bends and doesn't um, get you know a car can't break it I don't know they, they show that kind of stuff but anyway so I just test um, tested it just literally about 30 40 minutes ago um, so we'll see I, I gotta think about it it's only a hundred feet and a little bit annoyed because it doesn't reach all the way back there I have to consider doing a new system of something else there uh, to get the water back there because I got a water sprinkler system going on here and so yeah blah 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 all right guys so look this is the John and Mary garden named after my mother-in-law and father-in-law um, we've got some beautiful stuff going on in here we've got a midnight masquerade penstemon we've got a ruby giant echinacea or coneflowers we have liatris, which are these tall purple uh, cone type of, or not cone, yeah, I mean, like rod type of uh, bulbs. Actually, they were bulbs, and I thought that that might be an interesting 
the thing to add and it's really really doing really well the bees are loving it um, I have a dahlia here this is the one that I planted last year um, it wasn't a bulb it maybe it was a bulb inside the pot but I brought them there were red ones and purple um, red and yellow this one's the yellow the red one didn't come back this year don't know when I came to check the grounds the, this area here where this dwarf phlox white phlox was or is was the red dahlia but it it just uh the bulb just got i guess too moist and it just rotted so let me go on this side really quickly it might be better to go on this side yeah it might be better but look at that isn't that a beautiful little dwarf phlox it's so pretty i planted that a couple weeks ago and this beautiful echinacea i'm hoping she'll do really well in this space and she is called uh, i don't remember what it was called oh green jewel Echinacea. I need to put this in my book. I have a little book with all of my flowers that I've planted. Um, but these echinaceas can be quite, uh, I forget what they are at times. So I wanted to make sure I had this here for now until I get tags. So, but anyway, it looks like she's going to put a nice little, yeah, she's got a nice little head here that she'll uh, put something. There's another one right there. So I think we're, looks like we're doing good here. Okay. So, ah, look at this beautiful penstemon. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it's so beautiful. And the bees are loving it. Look at those bees right here, look. Aren't they pretty? Yeah, there they go. They're just like, mm, this one looks like he's resting. <laughs> he's a little tired. Like, man, I'm working really hard here. Um, I got here a salvia. Uh, I don't remember the type of salvia it is. Uh, she's doing really good. This one here is a Baja, Baja Sombrero Echinacea, a cone flower, that one right there. We've got another salvia here, and I, it's the same as this other purple one, but I can't remember what the name of it is. I've got a, right here, I've got a Lily Nile of the, let me see, Lily of the Nile? They're almost like cone, they're like, uh, no, they're not, I keep saying cone. Why do I have cone in my vocabulary? They are like these, um, alliums. They're almost like alliums. They'll grow really tall and they put a big poofy ball, kind of, um, a ball of little tiny flowers. And I saw that, and funny enough, when I saw that, I fell in love with it because I saw it in Florida. I went to visit a family, uh, family friend of ours and I was like, oh man, I need this in my garden. Yeah, so, but they haven't put any, anything yet. I haven't seen anything yet come up. Uh, we had some frost that destroyed a lot of our, some of our stuff. So we'll see if it'll come through. Got some bearded irises here. They have not pulled, put anything yet because I just planted them in the early spring, but I don't know if they'll do anything this year. They might need to wait until next year. We got some peonies here. They already put their flowers and they were just stunning. I have those on my Instagram if you want to go on my Instagram. And it's uh, uh, Garden Fun with Polly. So you can look that up there. I've got a beautiful um, lilies. They're yellow. And I had these in the front of, of my house, but I took those down. And here is an M. It's almost like a allium as well, but I think these are called amethysts. I'll, I'll put the name here when I finish. I'll make sure it's uh, this guy right here. Beautiful phlox is about to, well, starting to bloom. Look at that. Oh, look, how, look, how, look at the design on that. Look at that. It's so perfectly designed. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder how, uh, you know, how God, Mother Nature does the designs of things. It's just so freaking awesome. Just beautiful. Hell, I got to show you this really quickly. So... We had some frost a cup in the in the beginning of March. I can't remember when it was, but it it really did a number on my on this, and I'm so happy to see that it's got a bulb coming through, um, a bud. Sorry, it's got a bud coming through. So I'm really excited to see how that's going to do this this season in the garden. And we've got another salvia here. We've got a beautiful midnight pentamen. She's put her flowers. She's still got some flowers, but I don't know if she'll, uh, this is my first full year. I got them last year 
late summer and they were, you know, babies and they weren't really ready to, you know, do this kind of show. So we'll see how that works this year in the full season. Uh, here's a, a ruby red, a giant ruby red echinacea. Lily of the Nile here and amethysts here. Look at that. She was, when I tell you she was dead, she was just like, uh, I mean, the frost just really got her. But look, she's put two new ones. And I'm really, really, really excited about that. I'm loving it. And we have some dahlias here. Those guys look really, really nice. Sunflowers, still working on them. Uh, I don't know. They put their flower for a minute and then they just started doing that. Um, I'm hoping that they are happy here. I'm hoping. I don't know what they do. Never plant. I planted a sunflower last year in the Grand Canyon garden back here, but uh, didn't do really well. It didn't come back. Uh, not that it's supposed to come back. I think it's supposed to reseed itself. Or I'm supposed to. I don't know. I've never done it and get great success. So we'll see. Um, here is a Russian sage, and she's already starting to put some bloom. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. I mean, that's just freaking awesome. Yeah, you know what? I'm, I didn't really go in, didn't show the flowers in here. Should do that. So this is that dahlia. And then this is the ruby, the giant ruby uh, echinacea. And look at these pentamens. Uh, let's see if I can go in here. Just a little bit. That's pretty. The bees just love them. They just love them. All right, so. Got our hammock out. We got a cannas right here in the pot with some wave petunias. I th I'm hoping that these, um, last year my neighbor, Miss Alom, sent me or gave me some seeds. Or she didn't give me seeds. She had them, they were already planted in there in her pot. And she gave me the, uh, she gave me some common globe amaranths and they were just stunning. They were just stunning. So I'm hoping that they'll come back and work our way over here now all right so this is the Grand Canyon Grand Canyon garden um, over here I have a beautiful um, Spanish is it Spanish yes Spanish lavenders and so that's uh, working its way through there i had a i started to dig a hole here uh for a foxglove but i changed my mind i didn't want to put it here because it was just i might have to rethink a couple of things over here and we have this beautiful 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 um mums as you can see i have this beautiful yellow one <laughs> funny story about these guys i'll tell you in a second they've got this beautiful burgundy reddish ones right here they my wife brought them what three four years ago for our front porch and they were in pots and we put them in another uh, like another casing or another another pot um to kind of you know make the front look a little bit festive for the fall you know they they did their show and then they ended up you know drying up and so i grabbed them and threw them in the back here in the where my pots are little shelf that i have back there and didn't pay attention to them. You know, I was like, oh, these guys are dead. I'm not gonna worry about them. Long story short, the next spring, they were still doing this little weird, little weird uh, growth on it. And I'm like, okay, half of it was dead and half of it was like one or two stems were like in bloom. And I was like, oh, I thought they don't come back. I don't, I didn't think that they would re-bloom or anything like that, but they did. And I went and I ended up placing it here um, and that was four years ago and three years ago. And now look, it's just starting to fill up really nicely. Uh, right here we have Dianthus. It's a beautiful star shaped lavender, very soft lavender Dianthus here. And we've got a red one here. This, as you can see, some of them are still in bloom, which I think that's quite fun. I've got this really tall daisy. I never planted them, so I'm assuming that they um, were spread by the birds because we've got a lot of uh, tree. We have a, a Rose of Sharon tree here, and we've got a cherry tree here that I planted when we brought the house. 
Um, and, you know, some nests might be in there and the birds just like to bring stuff, which I have to always keep an eye out because they bring things that are not good for us. <laughs> They've got viney things that are, like, annoying into the gardens. So I have to constantly keep an eye and pluck things. So anyway, we've got some other plants that I can't remember their names because I planted them years ago. And um, I'm not sure what's going on. I've got a creeping flocks right here this whole cluster here and I also have right behind on the back of the fence is some Mexican petunias and they're starting to grow really tall which I'm kind of happy they're, they'll get up to about where the trellis um, starts and this panels uh, finishes so those are gonna look really nice here we've had them in, um, in another bed and actually they were all in those four rings that whole area this whole area was Mexican petunias and I've removed them from there. Uh, so how much the garden has changed over time, but now they're back here and I'm hoping that they'll do really well. They didn't do really well last year, but I'm hoping that next this year they'll do really nicely. I've got a beautiful penstem in here and I've got some salvia here and the black eye Susans are starting to pep up. Really excited about them. And we have some echinacea. Uh, I think this is a Baja. Uh, nope, it's a ruby giant that's uh, right here. So I'm hoping that they'll do really well here. Uh, and I got some creeping jennies here. I have some bearded irises here. And uh, let me just show you really quickly this creepy giant. Uh, so she looks like she's about to, I mean, she's about to explode. So I'm excited about that. They haven't done anything yet. So this area here perhaps is shown the showmanship will happen more like in the summertime. Uh, Creeping Jenny, funny enough, this Creeping Jenny looks a little bit anemic. I don't know what's going on. So I'll pull this, because this is a morning glory. And those suckers, if you don't keep an eye on them, and you don't control them, they will take over your garden. Um, I, I, I love them, they're pretty little flowers, but they are viney, and they are very, um, you know, they are, they take over, so you gotta be careful. But anyway, I gotta figure out what's going on with this creeping Jenny because she needs a little bit more nurturing, more nurture uh, nutrients, perhaps. I have some beautiful tall. These are about to explode too. These are day. These are other types of day lilies. I um, I don't know what type they are. Um, they've been. I would say they came with the house because I know I never planted them, and somehow they've made their way over here. Uh, I'm thinking that I did that because this here, whole area here wasn't with that. Um, <laughs> funny enough, I can't remember what I do sometimes. Got some over here as well. Uh, over here is a cluster of violas, and uh, those suckers spread. So if you ever have violas, be careful with them. If you're planning on buying them into your garden, just know that they do tend to spread unless you put them. They'll still spread, doesn't matter what, what you think. They'll spread regardless. And the last, but not least is my son's beautiful blueberry bush. Uh, we planted that when he, when we first, I would say about the first year, maybe the second year that uh, we moved here. And uh, we planted it there and it's been there ever since. And it's just, so it's one of those nostalgic little th plants that we keep remembering here. He is um, 22 and he's about to graduate on Friday. <laughs> Yay. But anyway, these are about to, I mean, they're, they're making their way. They'll be blue maybe, I don't know, maybe four weeks, maybe three weeks. I'm not sure. There's some starting to turn blue already. Look at that. That one's starting to turn blue. Oh, okay. So we'll see what that does. Anyway, um, so this is what's going on with my John and Mary garden, Grand Canyon garden all the way back. Um, super excited about that I've got uh, we're having a little graduation party for my son this Saturday so I'll be cutting grass and cleaning up which I already started to do um, and then next week I'll be doing maybe next week I'll do a video of the what's happening back there in the reflecting garden that's changed a lot and and maybe I'll do the butterfly garden in between so you guys can see and then also maybe do one in the front so I'm super excited to share with you guys what's going on. So that's a little quick mid-spring tour of these areas so far. And uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate you and catch you on the next one.
Okay, bye.